In this video, we're going to be looking at how to add text behind the person in Filmora, a little bit like this. And this, and this, and don't forget this. <laughs> now, creating this effect used to take hours and hours and require tons of patience and skill, and unfortunately, I don't have either of those. But luckily for me, and luckily for maybe you, Filmora have given us multiple ways to achieve this effect and put text behind an object in video. Now, results will vary depending on the video that you're using. For example, a slow moving but high contrast video is probably going to get better results than a fast moving video with lots of fine details. But the good news is there's multiple ways to achieve this effect. So I'm going to show you all of them. And then depending on the video that you're using, you can try each different effect and see which gives you the best results. So what I'm going to show you first is the initial setup. Now, no matter which of these processes we use, the same kind of initial setup applies. So first of all, we're going to drag a uh, video into our timeline. And I'm just going to reduce that to like a few seconds, really. Five seconds will do. And then we've got another layer above in which we're going to add some text. So I'm just going to click on titles and I'm just going to use default title and I'm going to drop it in here. Now, I'm just going to leave a little bit of a gap so that it doesn't start straight away. So you've got the video and then the title comes in. And as you can see, it just appears. So let's write something in here that's a little bit more appropriate. So let's keep it really original. I like to use kind of tall, narrow fonts. Um, so Bebas New. I'm not any idea if that's the right pronunciation, um, but Bebas is a good one. And I'm just going to make that bigger by dragging it and dragging it to the side. So there you go, it's massive and it covers the video as you can see at the moment. A couple of things I'm also going to do, I'm just going to click on advanced. And I'm just going to apply a little bit of shadow to that as well. Reduce the opacity, increase the blur. Now, it's more prominent on a lighter video, obviously. It's quite a dark video, but um, it just, just makes it stand out slightly. And the next thing I'm going to do is add some animation. So as you can see, if I just drag this timeline, it just appears. It just, there it is, and then and then it's gone again. So I'm just going to click on animation, and I'm going to click on in. So in is the animation coming into the scene. Out is the animation going out of the scene. And loop is if you want it to continually do something whilst it is visible. So in, I'm just going to use um, one where it comes in from the left-hand side like so and then as it leaves we're going to have one where it goes out to the right which i think is this one just double check yeah so if i just drag this along you'll see that the title comes in from the left and then it goes out to the right so there we go so obviously the whole point of this video is to show you something where it's behind the object so to do that we create another video track, which you can do by clicking on this little symbol here, clicking add video track. Um, we're then going to copy. So you can right click and copy. You can control and see. We're going to copy this original video. Then we're going to select the new track that we've added. And we're then going to paste that in. Now, it might put it kind of in a different area. So you've got to kind of drag it across and align it. The good thing about Filmora is when you're aligning things, you'll notice you get these um, vertical um, lines, if you like, just to show that it's all aligned. So we now know that them videos are kind of on top of each other. So we can't see the text at the moment. That's because we've put a video above it, and that video is blocking the text, and it's blocking the video underneath. So that is our initial setup. So no matter which process we're, that I'm going to show you, that is going to be the same on all of them. Now, this is where it differs. So when you've got a fairly static object in your video, which we have with this, with whilst that earth is rotating, the actual shape of that earth doesn't really move. It's not moving around left, right or anything. It's fairly static. So there's a really easy way of doing this. We click on the video at the top. So the first one is visible and we can click on mask. Now, this one's actually quite easy because it's um, because it's Earth. It's a perfect circle. You could actually just click on circle and draw a circle. But I'm going to use this AI mask. So this is a new feature that they've added with Filmora 13. And it's actually really easy. So you basically tell it what you want to where you want to apply a mask and it should do it automatically. So you've got brush size. So obviously, if it was a little bit more intricate, you can reduce the size. Now, all I'm going to do is kind of roughly draw on that. And you can see why by these all these little kind of squares, it's put a perfect mask around it. 
Now on the right hand side, you've also got this um, extend, blur strength and opacity. So what we can do is we can increase that. Now if I could increase that load, you can see how earth is disappearing. If I reduce that, I think it works best if you just add a tiny little bit to it. So there you go. What we've done in effect is we've duplicated the video. We've put some text in the middle and then we've put a mask around it so that it only takes that kind of one object out if you like so you can see what's underneath on the next layer. So I'm just going to render that video and then I'll press play and you can see what it looks like. So I'm just going to press play. There you go, you can see the text comes in and the text will disappear again and it's behind the object so it's quite a nice effect. So that was probably the easiest way of doing this using a static object. So now I'm going to show you a way called Smart Cutout. Now I'm just going to delete these um, video tracks. I'm going to leave the text in there because rather than us recreate that we'll just, we'll just repurpose that one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag another video in. So I'm going to use this one. So I'll reduce the size of it and I'm going to control C, select the other video track, control V and then line them up. So there we go. And I'm just going to reduce the size of that uh, text effect as well. So what we've got now is two duplicated videos with text in the middle. Now I'm going to click on the top video because that's the one we're going to be cutting. And I'm going to go to the right hand side and there's an AI tools tab. Click on that and then we're going to use this smart cutout feature. And we're just going to click on start. Now what this is going to do is it's going to let us kind of um, colour in and mask the area that we want to cut out. Now we can highlight the area that we're going to cut out in any colour. So I'm just going to change it to green because so it'll be visible. Change the brush size again and we just literally very roughly kind of sketch around and outline the parts that we want to cut. Doesn't have to be wildly accurate and I'll show you why in a second. So that's pretty much telling it where I want to select and as you can see it's done a good job of picking that up. Now what I'm then going to do is just change this edge thickness. I think it works out. I think you get the best results when you increase it slightly. Now that is going to add a mask around that part but just on that one frame. So what we now do is we click this button which will basically tell it go to go to the end of the video track and then back again. And if, it, if your video has got movement in it and there's anything that's kind of adjusting, it will automatically try and pick up their movements as well so that the mask always stays around whatever the object is. I'm just going to press start and we're just going to wait for that to complete. So that's now finished. It took approximately 30 seconds on a four second clip. So you can see that could be quite slow if you've got a long clip and there's plenty of movement in it. We're just going to press save. Now you can automatically see that some of that text is appearing as well and it's behind the mountain. Now you could add some kind of 3D depth, I guess, if you um, just picked out this front mountain and um, you, you put the text in front of the, the back ones as well. So it all depends on how you draw that mask. One thing I will show you actually, because I forgot to mention there, you do have this eraser button as well. So if you want it and you, it highlights a part that you don't want highlighting in your mask, you can select that and you can just go and again, try and color it in and it will remove that as well. So like I say, we could add some almost 3D depth to that as well. So what I'm going to do is just go back to our text and get us a little bit finicky because it's now in this middle layer. If you try and kind of drag it, it'll drag the top layer, but we still can resize as well. So I'm just going to take this and I'm just going to drag that up because the it's more about what's going across the top really. And I'm going to drag that across and let's write something really original in it, it like a uh, mountain because I cannot think of anything more creative than that. I'm going to resize it and I'm just going to move it up again. I'm going to use these here. So there you go. So you can see how it's kind of behind the mountain range as well. So again, let's render it, let's press play and let's see what the results look like. So there we go. We can see the animated text comes in and goes out again. It's behind that object. So I think that works really well. Now, before I show you the method that I think gets the best results, I'm going to show you perhaps the worst one. And there is a caveat for this as well. So let me explain. First of all, let's delete those tracks. And I'm going to add in this lady that's lying down. Just going to reduce the size a little bit. 
and move that text over. And then again, I'm gonna duplicate that video, Control C, Control V, and align it back up. So here we are, we've got this lady with, that's rolling a pomegranate around. Um, not, too, not too sure what this video is trying to kind of convey, but I suppose that's not the point of this tutorial. So there's a brand new feature, um, and I kind of alluded to it before. It's a brand new feature in Filmora 13 called AI Masking. So if we go to the Mask tab, and again, we've got this AI Mask. Now, when I shown it you before, what we did was we just created um, a static mask that didn't move. Now, what the team at Filmora have created is a way that you can have one that tracks as well. So a little bit like that last effect we smart cut out, you've got an AI mask that will automatically track. So if we click on this drop down, you've also got a select character and select subject. And what it'll try and do is it'll try and recognize in the scene what it thinks that you should pick out. So if we actually click on select subject, it actually does a really good job there. So you can see it's automatically added to that mask. And again, we can extend it slightly. So I'll just add that to one. Now, what you do is if this is gonna be a constant moving um, video, if you like, and a moving mask, then if you click path, what it will do is it will track any motion all the way through. Um, so any movements it will pick up and that mask will just move and it'll all supposedly work beautifully and it's a real easy, fast, couple of clicks way of creating a, a, a mask against anything with motion. Now it's just given us that message that it only supports tracking for 20 seconds. That was much quicker than the smart cutout version. But there's a gotcha here. There's a, there's a definite caveat. Now I'll render it and play it in a second and I want you to see if you can notice what the actual issue is. Now bear in mind, this lady does not move. She moves her hand as she rolls that pomegranate around, but she barely moves. So what I'm gonna show you now is 10 times worse when you actually use it on um, a proper moving video. Now I'm gonna leave mountain in the background because you've, you've got the gist of that. You understand what I mean by changing the words. But if you have a look and you can probably see it, if you look around here, you see where you've got these thick red lines so look at the edge of the lady, see how it's moving around and it coincides with all these little keyframes that are in the video clip as well. So if I push that around, see that red line, it's, it's not even remotely accurate, it's moving around when the lady's not even moving. So I'm not sure what motion it's tracking, but the motion to me just looks silly. You'd have been better off just creating a static mask that didn't move. Um, so when you actually use a video clip where, that's got movement in it, it's 10 times worse. Now, the reason I'm showing you this, because I've just admitted that I think this is more or less unusable at this stage, is because this is a brand new feature. And I would like to think and hope, and I'm optimistic that the team that create Filmora will work on this feature, they'll improve it, and then one day it'll actually be really accurate and probably a much faster way of creating these masks and be able to put text behind an object. Okay, so I'm now going to show you the two best ways I think do this, the ones that give you the best results. So let me just drag this video in and reduce the size of it. And then I'm just going to duplicate it as usual, align them up and move that text a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I've just wrote some text on there that says hello. I'll drag that back so you can't see it again. So one of the um, one of the best ways of doing this is using this button called AI Portrait. So again, we click on the top video, AI Portrait. That was one click, and I think it gives you kind of the best results as well. Again, you can add a little bit of thickness if you want. You can see see there when you put like a ridiculous size thickness, it takes away the words. I think sometimes one, two, maybe three works really well. And how easy was that? Now considering. Um, the lengths that you would have to go to in the past to achieve a result like that, I think that was really good. Let's render it and view it. So we're just gonna press play. And as you can see, I think that's really good. There's a little bit of distortion. What you tend to find with some of these effects that I'm showing you is you might get pixelation or distortion around the edges. So it's again, it's playing around finding which is the best way of doing it. Now that's one way of doing it. Now it's called AI Portrait. It does work for only certain subjects. It wouldn't work particularly well 
for one of them buildings and you also can't select the area that you want which is why masking can be better for objects and buildings what it does let you do though is um, people and also you can do animals if I quickly just demonstrate what I mean there so let's get that chicken and let's just duplicate the chicken which sounds weird and again let's just go to AI tools AI portrait and there you go works really quick really nice and it's cut that chicken out as well so like I say different subjects work in different ways when it comes to these effects I'll show you one last way which is actually really easy and probably gives you the best results but is a big caveat so let me show you that now now I'm gonna go back to this video of this um, happy looking lady and we're gonna duplicate it And again, if you just watch how quick this is to apply. So at the moment you can't see the text. And we're gonna go into effects. And we're gonna take this effect called human segmentation. Now it's important to notice this symbol. If I, ho if I hover over it, it disappears. So I'll just hover it above. You see that little diamond in the top left hand corner? So I'm gonna pick that up, drag it onto the video. And it's going to say you're using a paid effect for Filmora. So you can purchase this or you can subscribe. Now, I don't bother with a subscription because everything I need generally is, um, is within the kind of non-subscription version. So this is like an extra thing that the add-on. If I click on purchase, I'll show you what I mean. So this is Filmora Creative Assets. You can actually pay um, per year or per month. And it tells you here what you can get. So you get all these different assets of different effects, music, presets, AI effects. There's lots of really good stuff. I've just never really felt the need to buy it. So if I get rid of that and just cancel that. Now what it will do is it will still add the effect and it'll show it us. It's just that when I try and export it, it'll give me an error because it'll say you need, to, you need to get your credit card out, John, and pay us some money. So let's render and preview that. Now, the reason I like this, which is a little bit annoying really, because I've just shown you so many ways of doing it, but this way is by far the most accurate when you look at the edges. There's hardly any pixelation. There's hardly any distortion. It is extremely clean. So I'm, that's where I'm kind of hopeful that some of them other effects will be improved and it'll get to this point because the software is clearly capable of doing it. The caveat is it works for people, so it's not particularly good with objects. But like I say, that subscription does give you access to a lot more things. If you want to change anything around that, you click on this effects tab that will appear once you've applied it and you can add the edge thickness and the feathering again. But I don't think that's even needed um, when you use this effect. To me, it's the most accurate way of doing it. So there you go, multiple ways to achieve an effect where you put text behind an object in Filmora. Let me know in the comments anything else that you want to learn. Is there any tutorials you want me to create? And then stay tuned for the next video, which is gonna give you even more of an insight into what Filmora is actually capable of.